Hello everyone and welcome to this two-part series on how to make this scene in Blender from scratch. My name is Irina and I'm a 3D artist. I love to create cute and cozy models in Blender. As you might have noticed, 3D art in this cute style became more and more popular lately, not only because of the way it looks, but also because it's beginner-friendly. Together with Enhanced School, we made this free course in which you will learn how to create 3D models in this cute style. It will consist of two videos in which we will guide you through the whole process. First, we're gonna dive into the basic tools for modeling and we'll create such shapes in Blender. Second, we will show you how to properly set up materials, lighting and make a beautiful render with animation for your portfolio. It will be a good opportunity to learn and improve your skills and in the end of the course, you will get this beautiful 3D model. I hope you will enjoy this 3D journey with me and I'm super excited to see what you will create. Let's get started. So Blender is opened and we can start to model. But first of all, let's talk about some user interface basics so you can easily navigate in this space. Blender UI can be a bit overwhelming for newcomers, but don't worry. Once you understand its basics, it becomes a powerful tool for 3D modeling and animation. So let's talk about some fundamentals. So the first one that we're going to talk about is the viewport. It's the central area of the UI where you can interact with your 3D scene. You can view and manipulate 3D objects, cameras, lights in this area. You can also zoom, move and rotate the view to navigate your scene using the mouse or keyboard shortcuts. So for example, if you want to zoom in, you use your mouse wheel, just scroll it to zoom in. And if you want to rotate the view, you just press on your mouse wheel and just like that you rotate it. And if you want to move the whole view of the scene, you just press shift and press on your mouse wheel and just move it like this and it will move just like it does here. And the second one that we're gonna talk about is screen layout. Uh, Blender UI is divided into several workspaces which you can switch between using tabs at the top of the application window right here as you can see. And the common workspaces include layout, modeling, sculpting, animation and more. And each workspace is optimized for specific tasks and that is very useful. And the third one that we're gonna talk about is Toolbar. So Toolbar basically contains various tools and options depending on the active workspace. And if we go, for example, to our screen layout at the top and choose Sculpting, we're gonna see that our Toolbar is changing. It has a lot of tools for our sculpting process. And there is a lot of them, as you can see. So in our layout tab here, we can see that our toolbar has tools like move, rotate, scale and transform that we can use in our process, but I think it would be better for us to use keyboard shortcuts instead. So first of all, you need to click on the object to select it and now we can use G for grab to move it. And you also can move it on the various axes. For example, if you want to move it on the X axis, you can press G and X to move it on the X axis. And the same goes on to the Y axis. You can press Y to move it on the Y axis and Z for the Z axis. And move it just like that. And the same goes on to the scaling. We press S for the scale to tweak the size of our model and click X to scale it on the X axis, Y for the Y axis and Z for the Z axis. The next thing is rotation, P press R to rotate it R and add X to rotate it on the X axis, Y for Y and Z for Z. Just like that. And that is the the main shortcuts that we're gonna use in our modeling process. To help you, we prepared a list of shortcuts that you can use and you can find the file with all of the shortcuts down in the video description. So the next one that we're gonna talk about is the outliner. The outliner is a panel on the right side that displays a list of all objects in your scene and you can use it to select and organize objects and quickly navigate in your scene, create folders, uh, organize your objects and here in our scene we have a uh, camera, cube and light as you can see and it is being displayed in the outliner. 
So that's basically it. And the last fun dimension that we're gonna talk about is the header. At the top of the UI you'll find the header which can includes uh, different menus, modes, selections like object mode, edit mode, sculpt mode and etc. And other context specific options. It also provides access to rendering settings, animation controls and other global settings. In our case we are mainly gonna use object mode and edit mode and to quickly switch between them we're gonna use a shortcut and the shortcut for this is tab you just click and you can switch between the modes as you can see so that's basically it on everything that we need to know about the basic UI information that we need at the start of this course so now we can move on to the modeling so now we can start to model our scene and to do that first of all we need to get rid of everything in the scene that we have right now and to do that we left click and select everything to delete it and press X so after this we're gonna add a new mesh in our case we're gonna add a ver single word right here and after adding it you automatically switch to the edit mode so we don't need to do that we go to the front view by pressing one on the numpad and just uh, start to move it on the x-axis like this maybe and we start to extrude it to the side and extrude it to the top extrude it to the side again maybe something like this and to the top and we have a shape like this so now we're gonna use our first modifier and to do that we go to the object mode and on the right here you can see uh, a panel that says add modifier and you just click on it and find the screw modifier it has to be somewhere like right here yep and by adding it you can see that we made a simple block out of our gem jar and basically how screw modifier uh, works it just used to create 3d geometry by rotating a 2d shape around the axis and in our case it is a z axis and now we have to reduce the steps here to make the scale of our model a little bit more simple and we have something like this going on so right now we have to apply the modifier uh, by clicking this button right here and we have a simple shape of our gem jar already and right here we'll maybe scale up a little bit the top part of our jar something like this and let's fill up this loop here, select it and press F to fill it up. So the second modifier that we're gonna use is subdivision modifier. The same thing, you go to the right panel here, click add modifier and find subdivision surface modifier. After this you go put it on 2 and here we go. So basically a subdivision is a modifier used to smooth and refine the appearance of 3D models by adding more vertices and creating a smoother surface. And so it's basically primarily used to increase the level of detail and smoothness of 3D models and especially when dealing with low poly geometry. So in the modifier menu here you can adjust the levels for both view and render to determine how smooth and detailed you want your object to be. Uh, by increasing these values you will make the object appear smoother but it will also increase the vertex count. So now we have to refine our uh, model a bit more so let's go to the front view and go to the edit mode. Let's click uh, Ctrl R to add a loop right here and with this loop selected we click on ctrl b to bevel it like this and you can see how the model is more refined right now and let's add a loop here as well after this we have to use our third modifier let's go to the object mode 
and let's click on the add modifier right here and find solidify and put it on top it has to be on top of the subdivision and yeah we have to remember that so basically solidify modifier is used to give thickness to 3d mesh objects by creating new geometry along the surface effectively making the object solid and it will help us to make glass and gem more shiny and tasty looking and some kind of realistic and uh, with our object selected we can see that it has a solidify modifier on we can adjust these two parameters here uh, offset and thickness the offset parameter can be used to control the offset from the original surface and the positive value will extrude the new geometry outward while a negative value will create the new geometry inside the original surface we're not gonna touch it right now it can stay at minus one the parameter that we're gonna use is thickness we're gonna adjust the thickness of our 3d model in our case we can extrude the new geometry inside our model so we're gonna use the negative uh, value and put it somewhere like this and we can adjust it later so now we go to the edit mode and select the loop that we made at the top up and click ctrl b to bevel it a little bit like this and press e to extrude and s to extrude it outward to make a shape like this this should be fine now let's go to the x-ray mode select the top part of our jar and scale it up a little bit something like this should be fine and we're gonna have a shape like this you can also tweak the thickness of solidify modifier here to make it more thick or make it more thin however you want it to be and basically that's the shape of our jar now it's time to make our gem so let's go to the edit mode and select these loops right here starting from the bottom and going up and this one after that we click shift d to duplicate it and right click to let it go and right now we need to separate it so we're pressing p to separate and now as you can see we have a new object you can see it in the list of objects right here so the next step is scaling down our gem let's go to the front view and scale it down a little bit and let's turn on the x-ray to see it better and we're not gonna get rid of solidify we're gonna need it later so let's put it up a little bit let's go to the edit mode to tweak the shape a little bit maybe put it a little bit upwards extrude it or make it smaller you can extrude it you can make it in the shape of a jar you can make it look uh, whatever you want it to look like it's all up to you here as you can see I'm extruding the shape a little bit upwards and using the loops to tweak the shape. You can add more loops using Ctrl R to refine the shape uh, on the edges and basically we have our shape all done. Now let's organize our object a little bit and click on our jar. You can see it in the list of the objects. Click two times and you can change the name to jar. And the second one, our gem, let's rename it to gem. So now we have them renamed. Select both of the objects, press M to create a new collection, and we'll name it gem John. Okay, and now we organized our objects. So now, as you can see, I got both of the objects uh, removed from the scene. And now we're gonna start making our cooking board. We're gonna add a plane to the scene and go to the top view by clicking 7 on the numpad and let's scale it on the x axis by pressing s and x something like this now we go to the edit mode and extrude it on the z axis something like that and add subdivision surface modifier and put the levels on too until you have something like this going on now we have to add some loop cuts here and ctrl b to bevel it something like this 
Yep, and on this side as well. And in the middle, let's add one in the middle till we have a shape like this. And let's press Ctrl P to bevel it to something like that. Now we can go to the object mode, right click and shade smooth. And now we have a simple shape of our board done. But we need to add one more thing right here. So let's go to the edit mode and we need to select faces here. These three faces. So let's switch the mode on the top. As you can see there's three modes for the vertex, for the edges and for the faces. We're gonna choose the face select mode. And we're gonna select these three faces here. And let's duplicate them and separate them as we did before. And we have a shape like this going on. But we need to tweak it a little bit. Let's go to the edge select mode and select these two edges here. Press X and solve them. Now let's select everything and scale it down a little bit to make it a little bit smaller. So we have something like this going on. Let's go to the top view and start extruding it like this. And let's extrude it one more time like this. So we have this simple shape. You can make the shape whatever you want it to look like. And I'm, I think I'm gonna go with this round looking shape. Let's put one more loop here on the edge and turn on our X-ray mode to see better. And scale down this loop right here. And this two here as well. And make this one a little bit bigger. Now we can select everything, press G to grab and move it on the x-axis like this. And we have something like this going on. But I don't like the shape actually. I wanted to make it a little bit chubby, maybe scale it on the z-axis. Or you can scale it down uh, or make the shape um, whatever you want it to be. I think I want to make it a little bit more chubbier. So we can also add one more loop in the middle to make it look something like this. And we're done with our cooking board. So let's organize our object again. Uh, let's rename our new objects that we have. The first one is uh, the board uh, base. Let's name it board. And let's select this thingy, the second one, and name it something like board part. Or whatever you want to name it. And we have something like this. Now we can bring back our gem jar by clicking this thingy here. Now we can see our gem jar. Let's select uh, both of the objects and go to the front view to move it up and put it on our board. I think gem jar is a little bit small, so we have to tweak the scale. I think we can make it a little bit more bigger and chubby. It's not chubby enough. And to do that, we press S and Shift Z to do something like this. Chubby and S to scale it to make it a little bit more bigger. Let's put it down a little bit. Now we go to the top view to put it wherever you want to put it. Depends on the concept that you're choosing. And I think I'm gonna put it on the side maybe. Maybe something like this. Yeah. And we have gem jar and cooking board done already. Now let's organize our objects again uh, and put our board and board part in one collection by pressing M. Let's make a new collection for our board and hide both of our collections. And now we can start modeling our spoon. Let's add a new object to the scene. Let's add a circle. And we need to reduce a number of vertices to something like 8 or even better 12. Yeah, 12 is better. Now we need to tweak the shape of the circle. Let's go to the top view and go to the edit mode. I forgot that I have a proportional editing turned on. You can turn it off on the top here. 
or just press O on the keyboard. Now we can tweak the shape, uh, let's scale it up on the Y axis and X axis like this and to go to the side view and start extruding till you have a shape of a spoon going on. While extruding you also can scale it down a little bit like this. Now let's extrude it again and press S to extrude inwards to you have something like this and put it down a little bit on the axis now we can extrude it inwards again press m and merge at center and we have something like this now with proportional editing turned on let's select this loop here and move it on the z axis a little bit to tweak the shape so we have something like this now let's select the edge select mode and select these two edges here now let's go to the top here and start extruding it on y-axis like this maybe let's start from here and press s and y to make it even a little bit now s to scale it down like this and put it a little bit near the spoon and extrude it again on y-axis scale it up now put one more loop scale it down and on this part let's extrude it again like this and scale it down a little bit till we have a shape like this going on let's take this part put it a little bit here until we have something like this going on now let's select these edges right here and put them up on the z axis a little bit like this maybe we have something like this going on so let's go to the object mode and add a subdivision modifier and let's put the levels on two and right click shade smooth and we need to add solidify as well and put it on top let's add more thickness to our spoon till we have something like this if you want you can make it thicker it depends only on you but i think i'm gonna make something like this and here i want to tweak the size of, of the upper part of our spoon so i'm gonna select this part with a vertex select mode and make it a little bit bigger scale it up a little bit like this and on the y-axis as well until we have something like this now with proportional editing on we choose this part and put it down on the z-axis a little bit let's go to the side view and rotate it as well so we have something like this and let's see it looks all right now let's bring back our objects back to our scene and our spoon is a little bit big let's scale it down until it looks normal and go to the front view to put it on the board so here you can put your spoon whatever you want it to be first time i thought that i can put it on the jar and it will look good but it didn't look as good as I thought it would. I just didn't like the result, so I tried to put it on the board and I like it more. But if you want, you can put it on the jar, in the jar, on the board. It depends on you and your preferences. And now we finish up with renaming our object to Spoon, and we're basically done. So next I want to add some gem drop coming out of our jar and maybe we're gonna put some gem drops on our board and we need to start with selecting uh, faces it depends on uh, where you want to put your uh, gem drop and I think I'm gonna put it here so I'm gonna select these few faces and actually I don't need these ones I'm gonna select these ones, shift T and be to separate it now we have to put it outwards a little bit and tweak the shape so with these edges selected let's scale them down a little bit 
select this and select this one and extrude it on the z-axis actually let's get rid of this edge here and scale this one down a little bit here and oops sorry and let's put this one outwards just a little bit and with this one let's scale it down and from here let's extrude it inside our jar and extrude it again like this let's put it over here and a little bit inside scale it down until you have something like this going on let's scale down this edge and this one and with these two selected let's uh, take the shape and put this over here and basically starting from here you can repeat these steps and make your uh, gem drop look more liquidy tweak the shape maybe make it bigger make it a little bit more chubby looking you can use references to help you achieve this uh, liquidy uh, liquidy look that gem has and I think I'm gonna go with the shape like this. So now I want to put a little bit of a gem in our spoon. So we're gonna select all these uh, faces here. Like this. And maybe two more on the side. Over here. Maybe one more. Now press G, D and B to separate it. And now let's move it on the z-axis, maybe tweak the thickness or tweak the size, however you want it to look like as well. And we're gonna repeat the steps that we did on uh, gem jar with this gem drop. Let's make another drop on uh, going on on our spoon. Tweak the size, make it more liquidy looking and we're gonna end up with something like this. So now let's add more drops to our uh, board. Let's add a plane and add subdivision modifier and solidify. Let's put it on top, tweak the thickness, right click shade smooth and actually put it on the level 2. And now you can tweak the thickness and tweak the size of your drops, maybe duplicate it and put it near each other and maybe make the other one smaller. Duplicate it again, put it near the jar from the other side and maybe put some on the other side of the spoon. It depends on uh, your preferences and on the concept that you're working on. And I'll have something like this maybe. And now let's make cherries, let's add cube to the scene. After this we're gonna put a subdivision surface modifier and put it on 2. Right click shade smooth. Now let's go to the edit mode and select this face on top and press I like this and right now with proportional editing turned on we're gonna put this face down on the z-axis like this so it looks kind of like a cherry cherry shape let's tweak the bottom face a little bit let's put it up a little bit on z-axis and with the top face selected let's scale it down a little bit put it down on the z-axis till we have something like this going on now let's duplicate it and separate it and we have the separate object here let's scale it up a little bit and go to the edit mode to the front view and start to extrude it on the z axis like this and put a little more loops here now let's select this part and rotate it a little bit and maybe select the top part as well and rotate it like this and the bottom part as well now let's put a loop on the edge and on the top as well so we have something like this let's put it a little bit here and we have a cherry maybe tweak the position a little bit more to put it in the middle and we have a cherry let's scale it down and now we can move on to the leaf 
Let's add a plane, move it to the side, scale it down, go to the top view. And now we're gonna add some loops. Now we're gonna add a loop in the middle. And starting from the top part, we're gonna scale it down a little bit. Now we're gonna add a subdivision surface modifier, put it on two. Let's add more loops in the middle and on the sides. And with proportional editing turned on, let's tweak the shape to make it look more like a leaf. Something like this. And right now we're gonna add a solidify modifier, put it up and tweak the thickness until you are satisfied. Maybe something like this will be fine and go to the object mode, right click, shades mode. Now let's go to the edit mode again and tweak this part here and at the top. Let's scale it on the y-axis and with this loop selected, we're gonna click on Ctrl B to bevel it and if you scroll your mouse wheel, it's gonna add another loop in the middle and we're gonna put this loop and we're gonna put it down on the z-axis to make this thingy in the middle that leaves have. Now let's select this vertex and press Shift S and choose cursor to select it. And at the top let's select 3D cursor. Now let's go to the side view and rotate our model on x-axis. And as you can see, we rotate it depending on our 3D cursor right now. So it can take a shape like this. And we're basically done with our leaf. Now let's scale it down and actually put our center to 3D cursor. It would be easier to rotate our leaf like this. And now let's put our leaf on our cherry. And maybe put it up here or maybe oh let's change the um this one on medium point and right here we can start to tweak the position rotate it and after you finish you can actually put the whole cherry on our board to the position maybe duplicate it um put it on the sides put it near the jar and maybe put some near the spoon it depends on the concept that you chose and for me I think that we have to put two in the front put one in the back and maybe two smaller ones in the front near the spoon you can scale them up or scale them down put them wherever you want to put them and maybe delete some parts of the cherry and maybe take only leaves scale them up put them around the board to make it look pretty and we're finally completely done with our scene. In the end you need to make sure that your scene is not too heavy or not too empty. You can move the objects, tweak the scale and I hope in the end you will get the result that you wanted. As you can see it's enough to understand basic UI and modeling to create beautiful 3D models like this. No need to spend a lot of time on something you can learn in a couple of weeks. But it's just the tip of the iceberg. If you want to dive deeper into the creative process of creating a more complex scene with animations like this for your portfolio, you can check out our course that we made together with Enhanced School. In this course we're not only gonna create this scene from scratch, but also we will teach you how to make viral videos videos with your 3D models for your socials. This way you will reach more people, get more followers and find more clients. You can find a link to the course in the description. Hey guys, welcome to the second part of our two-part series on how to create this scene in Blender. In this video we're gonna talk about texturing, lighting and render. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start from textures and we have our model ready as you can see and let's add a camera first and to do that let's press shift A to add a camera. As you can see it's added to our 3D cursor and now we need to tweak its position. To do that let's press Ctrl Alt and 0 on the numpad until you have something like this. Now let's go to the output tab on the right and here you can tweak the resolution if you want. Do something like this and now let's go to the camera settings and change the type uh, to autographic. 
uh, now in this tab on the right you can press N to see it. In the lock settings we have to click on camera to view so we can tweak the position of the camera and you can also tweak the scale and put it in the position that you want uh, it to render in the end. I think I'm gonna put it something like this. Now let's separate our viewport to two tabs. Uh, you can do that by going to this right corner, click and drag until you have something like this. And now in the right tab, let's disable the lock setting. And now let's make sure uh, that in the render settings you are rendering in cycles. And here I'm gonna put the GPU compute in the device. And now in the left tab we can switch to render preview on the top here. And now we can start adding our lights. And we're gonna start by adding a sun and put it on top a little bit. Now let's tweak the settings of our light and make it a little bit brighter and a little bit softer on the shadows. Let's also tweak the color to something warmer. Maybe something like this. It should be fine. Now let's take a position a little bit, let's put it in front and change the angle. And now we can start working on our materials. So the first material that we're gonna make is the material of our board. We're gonna make a simple wood material using notes, really simple setup. And we're gonna start by adding a color ramp. Let's search and here it is. Let's put it here. Now select the color ramp and press Ctrl T to have all the nodes that we need except of image texture. Let's delete it. And these two nodes we're gonna need later. Now let's change this here and add the next node. Uh, we're gonna add a Musgrave texture and we're gonna add a noise texture as well. Now let's connect everything uh, just as I'm doing here. And now we can also tweak the colors in the color ramp but first let's put one more thing here and let's choose the main color here maybe something brighter and put it in our flex here and now let's uh, choose the darker color and put it on the sides. Now let's connect everything and as you can see we have a wood texture but it doesn't look good so now we can tweak all the settings until we're satisfied with the look and I tweaked uh, mostly roughness and scale of the texture and until I got something like this going on, now let's select the thingy and then select the board, press Ctrl L and link the materials. Now click on the thingy and click over here to make a new material and tweak it for the thingy only. And you can tweak the scale. And here I wanted to change uh, the texture again for the board. So I tweaked some settings so you can see. You can do it as well. Here you go. We have have a really good wood material and now let's see how it looks in the render preview and it looks cool pretty fine for me uh, I think it looks really cute and now we can move on to our glass material let's start with our jar and let's go to the material tab here let's press new and rename it to a glass and uh, the glass material is pretty simple, we just need to tweak some settings here. And we're gonna put specular and roughness to 0 and put transmission to 1. And let's also put something like this on transmission roughness. And we have ourselves a really good glass material. And you can also tweak the roughness as you want and put the color maybe somewhat blue a little bit and we have something like this 
Now let's go to the render settings and turn on denoise so we can see our material better in the render preview. And as we can see, it looks pretty good. So now let's move on to our gem. Uh, gem material is the same uh, as the glass. So we go to the material tab and add a new material. Let's name it gem. And now we can start tweaking the settings. Let's put the color first to something like this. Oh, maybe it's a little bit too dark, but we can tweak it later. Let's go and put specular and roughness to zero and transmission to one. And tweak transmission roughness a little bit. Now we need to change the color to something brighter. And we have something like this let's select all the gem drops and our gem we are selecting selecting the last and click ctrl l and link material now you can see our gem looks pretty fine and it looks yummy just as we wanted it to look like now i just want to tweak uh, the thickness of the gem drops and maybe reposition them because when we put it in the camera view it changed the perspective a little bit and uh, the concept doesn't look the same as I wanted it to look like and I wanted to remodel the gem drop in the spoon I wanted to look more uh, chubby maybe something like this and I reposition more drops in the end until we have something like this so now let's move on to our spoon let's make a metallic kind of looking material and now we need to tweak metallic setting and maybe tweak the color a little bit to make it darker or brighter as you want it to look like and tweak the roughness to make it more shiny and maybe put metallic something right here and specular until you're satisfied you can tweak all these uh, three settings and the color until you get uh, the material that you're satisfied with and here we have something like this now let's move on to our cherries let's add a new material and change the color to red maybe a little bit darker and let's tweak the roughness make it more shiny and now we need to use the node setup. Let's go to the shading tab and click on our cherry. Here we need to add a color ramp again. Now let's put our color into the color ramp to the pause places. And for the for this one, let's put it a little bit to the orange side and make it a little bit more brighter. Now let's click to the color ramp and press Ctrl T. Let's delete the image texture and change this right here. And let's add one more node and separate X, Y, Z. And place the Z axis to the color ramp and connect others. And now let's connect the color. And as you can see, we got ourselves a really good uh, gradient going on our cherry. And here you can tweak it as you want. Maybe change colors and change the gradient until you have something like this. I think it looks pretty good in the render preview. Now let's go to the layout tab and select uh, the cherry. Tweak the color a little bit, maybe, maybe make it darker and change the second color now I select all the cherries and link material and we're done with our cherries let's move on to the next part of our cherry let's make a green material let's make it a little bit darker something like this let's take the saturation a little bit and now let's put the roughness something like this and let's select all the others 
this one and this one here and the link the material like this now let's move on to the leaves and to make the material we're just gonna make the same material that we made uh, just before uh, we're gonna link them and make a new material now we tweak the color make it a more darker than the other one and now we need to select all the leaves that we have on our board and link the material and we got ourselves something like this at this step you can change the position of the objects change the scale maybe duplicate them and put it wherever you want to put them it depends on the concept that you choose and maybe on your preferences but for me i thought maybe the cherries were smaller and I made them a little bit bigger and maybe duplicated some leaves and reposition them and for this cherry I thought that the position was not that good so I changed it something like this and then I changed the position of the leaves a little bit and I got something like this now before moving on to our light setup let's add an HDRI to my scene let's go to the shader editor on the top here and now let's put it on world and switch to the render preview in the right tab and go to the camera view here and now let's add some notes let's duplicate the background node and we're gonna add a mix shader and put it here now let's connect the background node to the mix shader and add a light path node now let's connect this camera view to our mix shader and add image texture and now let's click to the image texture and press ctrl t change this one here and connect the color to color now we need to change this to 0.5 and yes yeah, something like this let's find hdris you can find all this hdris in your blender folder if you follow this path right here and we can put it in our image texture i think i'm gonna go with the studio one as you can see this hdri gives our glass really good reflections and now we can change the position uh, in these settings here we can rotate our light source and give ourselves a really good reflections on our glass now let's tweak the rotation a little bit more on the x-axis and y-axis and i think i like this one it looks pretty good and the other settings i'm not gonna touch them because I'm pretty good with this one and now let's change the background color to something more darker and we have ourselves something like this now let's go to the 3D viewport let's change our view here and now we can start adding our light let's add a uh, side light first let's add a point light and put it to the side here and maybe put it upwards like this and maybe a little bit more to the side like this and now we need to change some settings as you can see now we have pretty good side light but it's not that bright let's change the brightness something like this and maybe make it softer like this should be fine let's put it a little bit more to the side like this and let's change the color to something warmer maybe something like this should be fine and now let's change the brightness a little bit more and put it to this position now we can duplicate it and put it in front to give ourselves more reflections and here we can change the radius of this one and maybe put it uh, a little bit upwards 
and a little bit closer to our board like this and I think it looks pretty good now we can go to the top view and duplicate this light to the top of our jar and maybe put it here and change the radius a little bit something like this and the position is pretty fine as well let's just put it a little bit more down until you have something like this and now we can change a color to something like this and I think it looks pretty good now we can duplicate this one again and put it to the back maybe change the radius a little bit to make it a little bit smaller and change the power and put it a little bit closer maybe now we can turn off the overlays and as you can see our lighting looks pretty good even if our setup is not that complex it's pretty simple as you can see and i think the lighting on the render result looks pretty good now we have our scene ready and it's ready for a render we're gonna also make a small video preview of our scene but first we need Need to organize our objects and we're gonna start with the lights let's put them in one folder let's select all of them and press M to make a new collection and we're gonna name it light and you're gonna see it over here now we are gonna hide it for a moment so we can see all of our objects and now let's put all of the objects in one collection starting with these objects let's put them in the new collection let's call it scene and let's select the objects that we had here our gem jar and board and we're gonna put them in the scene folder as well let's delete these ones we don't need them anymore and our spoon we're gonna put it in this folder as well so now we have all of our objects in one folder so the next thing we need to do is add an empty plane axis and let's select all of the objects and then we're gonna select an empty let's press ctrl p to parent it we're gonna click on object keep transform and now if you move your uh, empty the whole scene all of the objects are moving with it as well if you want to rotate it on the z-axis we're gonna rotate everything we're gonna use this uh, function of our empty to make our small video preview later so first let's turn on our lights and we can start animate let's drag this one up and here you can see the timeline we need to change something here so let's go to the output settings and put the frame rate on 30 and the frame end to 60 and now we can insert our keyframes so let's select our empty and on the zero frame let's insert our keyframe let's press i and put it on rotation let's select this keyframe and press ctrl c go to the 60 and press ctrl v like this now we have two keyframes set up now we need to go to the 30 and rotate our empty a little bit maybe on the z-axis just a little bit like this and now you press i again and press on rotation and now as you can see we have a small video animation here it's pretty simple now here in the output we can select the file format uh, i think we're gonna leave it at png and you can also tweak the color management here and maybe put medium high contrast and here you can put the output path just click here and you need to make a new folder in your project folder to put all of the frames here after rendering and now we can click on render and press render animation 
and it gonna start rendering our animation. Now the render is finished then we can close this tab and now you need to switch to the video editing so we can go to the file press new and choose video editing let's save and you can see that now we are in the video editing tab now let's change some settings here uh, you have to put the resolution of your uh, project and here we need to change the frame rate to 30 and frame end to 60 let's put the output path the same folder that we have a project in let's go to the render settings put it on cycles and now we need to add our sequence let's click on add image sequence and find the folder with our rendered frames let's select everything and add the image strip as you can see we have this small animation here and now if you are satisfied with all the settings you can click on render and render animation and now our animation is being rendered now our render is done and we can find our video in the folder that we put it on in the settings and as you can see we have this cute little video here we are finally done with our scene and here's the result we have so far as you can see it's enough to understand basic ui and modeling to create beautiful 3d models like this no need to spend a lot of time on something you can learn in a couple of weeks but it's just the tip of the iceberg. You can check out our course that we made with Enhanced School to learn how to create a more complex scene with animation like this for your portfolio. Each part will build upon the previous, providing a seamless learning experience. By the end of this series, you will have the proficiency to create stunning 3D scenes, develop your unique style and bring your creative visions to life. And after you bring all of your creative visions in life in Blender, we will create viral videos. My name is Ruslan and I was managing Enhanced Call accounts for over a few years. I was creating viral content with over a million likes in general. I have my personal vlog about hand painted textures. There is a blueprint that we will study. We will edit all these viral videos in free software CapCut. You will also learn how to follow modern trends and sounds, how to pick unique ideas that suits for your current experience how to correctly post on social media and how to provoke emotion and grab attention from people and this is actually unique information that you won't find anywhere else so let's start this exciting journey into the realm of 3d modeling and unleashing your artistic potential we will see you on the course